group tonight, I can see that, right? You guys doing all right? Yeah. You sure? You doing okay? Yeah. All right, all right. Emerald Lagasse here tonight. I'm dedicating the entire show to something near and dear to my heart, the cuisine of the South, Southern cuisine. Yes, indeed. You know, it's influenced by so many different cultures. There's English and Scottish and Irish and the French and the Spanish, African, just regular Indian Americans. It's amazing. But when you really look at American cuisine as a big melting pot, that's exactly, as you take the South out of it, it's exactly what it is. And we're going to talk about those and some incredible Southern dishes tonight. Ham hocks and beans, we're going to do some of them. Really, really simple. Oh, yeah, but first... We're going to do a fried shrimp salad with Vidalia onions and an old-fashioned remoulade sauce with pickled okra. <laughs> and have you ever heard of couscous? Have you ever heard of that? Well, we're going to take couscous to a new level tonight. We're going to top it with this tomato chili sauce, this condiment that I'm going to show you how to make. Oh! Makes me so happy. <laughs> and then a creamy buttermilk pie for dessert, if that's all right with you guys. And, of course, as you know, we got a, you know, incredible Doc Gibbs, Cliff, they're here, you know, they came out tonight. <laughs> so if you guys are ready for a Southern tasting, we'll get started right here on Emerald Live! <laughs> guys doing okay how are you honey oh it's okay we don't bite probably the smell that she's upset about you know when uh we always try to uh, start off the show with uh just a little educational format i'm gonna make this quick and we'll get right down to the uh the cooking part of it but uh, when you really look at some categories of cultures that have influenced cuisine in america big melting pot but in the south the same thing. You have the French, both Acadiana French and French, the classic French, that have influenced a lot of the sausage making. Andouille, andouillette. Something very special in Louisiana called boudin, which is a rice sausage. Those techniques, those ingredients influenced by the French. Believe it or not, you have the English who really influences with things like hams, cabbage, Native Americans with corn and squashes. And then we, uh, we come to the Spanish influences who have influenced American cuisine, but particularly the South. Black beans, some chilies, red beans, different legumes, the garlic. And then you have the Creole influences, that French, Spanish, and that black African melding pot together, things like okra, tomatoes, pecans, the seafood and shellfish from the Gulf. And when you keep going yams and you look at watermelon, different mustard greens and collard greens, peanuts, we have so much unique products. And in the South, the food tends to be a little spicier, the desserts tend to be a little sweeter. But the influences of the English, the Irish, the French, the Spanish, all of those that I talked about make this wonderful cuisine. It's a little bit different than the, in the Carolinas than it is in Georgia, than it is in Florida. Florida has a little more influences of the, of the Spanish, as in Louisiana. So when we come back, we're going to start with a little Creole influence, a fried shrimp salad with Vidalia onions. Right now, we're going to rock out with Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gibson Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Just joining us, we are doing, uh, talking about American cuisine, talking about the melting pot of it, but that special section in, in the South. And uh, we're going to do right, get right to it now. Enough of the history. We're going to get into our first dish, and that is we're going to start making a remoulade sauce that is very, very influential in Louisiana and parts around Louisiana, especially where there's water, like in the Gulf. This is a great dressing that you can use. Make it ahead of time. Keep it in the ice box. This is a wonderful spread for sandwiches and poor boys. But an absolute delicious sauce for cold seafood, whether it's oysters or clams or shrimp in this matter that we're going to do, fantastic. And even with fried seafood, absolutely fantastic. Simple to make. The biggest thing is, is getting all of the ingredients together because there's like about 10 ingredients. But I love recipes like that. You know, when you get a recipe and it says, take the first 12 ingredients and dump them in the thing, I like that. That's good. That's going to work. So I'm going to show you. It's emulsified, which means that it has an egg. No egg. Add the oil. It'd kind of be like the oil and vinegar thing, or vinaigrette, right? We add an egg. It emulsifies it, like mayonnaise. Here's what we're going to do. Fresh parsley. A little bit of ketchup. I like a little bit more than norm because I like the color and also the flavor that the ketchup gives. Mustard. Two types we're going to use. The regular yellow mustard, which is also going to give it a nice color. But then, to kick it up a notch, a little Creole mustard. That's that whole grain spicy mustard. You could use a pulmonary mustard if you don't have Creole mustard. So we'll add some of that. Two types of mustards. Now, you got to have garlic, right? Well, we didn't have any here. No, not yet. <laughs> when in doubt, just come to Emerald's refrigerator. There's always plenty of garlic. So we'll add a few cloves of garlic. Some garlic, horseradish, celery, I know, the guy in the back seat over there, he's like yawning right now. He's like, boy, he's only got to nine ingredients. I'm already tired. Then some regular onion. And then like any dressing, you know, it has to have spunk, you know? So it needs acidity. You could use vinegar. In this case, I'm using lemon juice, okay? The juice of one lemon. And then the egg that we talked about. I mean, come on, this ain't rocket science. Yeah, dump everything in the bowl. Wow. All right, watch. Now, the hardest thing is learning how to operate this heavy equipment. <laughs> Don't do this while you had a cold one or anything, you know? If you're gonna do that, wear a helmet. Now, put it on. La, 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 la. There we go. You wanna let it start a little bit? And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly, I've got a combination of like a pomace, a regular olive oil, and a little bit of extra virgin. You use all extra virgin, it's going to take over. Okay, it's just going to be a little bit too strong. So you slowly start drizzling in this. That's some drizzling music, Doc Gibbs. So the consistency of what this is going to be like, as you'll see right now, is just about like a mayonnaise. You see that? Nice dipping sauce like that. Now, if you like it a little more flavor of tomato, okay, this is when you can um, add a little bit more of the tomato ketchup. Now, what do you got to do? We didn't add any seasoning over there. You know, a bird didn't fly over this thing and put some salt and pepper like in here. You know what I mean? So, 
You got to taste this, you know? That's when your brain goes, by golly, I think it needs salt or pepper or kick it up a couple of notches, you know? So we got the salt and pepper in there now. You want more garlic, you get it, you know, more lemon. All right, so you get that. Now, here's the deal. You put this in a nice container, glass. You can use one of them zip bags, okay? You keep it in the ice box. You got a great dressing, a great sauce. Now, let's get to the shrimp. What I'm gonna do now is this. We're gonna take our shrimp. I got like some medium shrimp, or shrimps as we call them. We we'll peel them out. See, but if you really look at them, they're not happy right now. They're kind of sad. That's because they're naked, okay? No, I mean, look, look at them. So, what I like to do is make them really happy, you see? What you do. You see, at this point right now, they're giggling like crazy right now. They're giggling. Then what I do is I take some flour and some cornmeal, sift it up like that. That's why you sift it. You get rid of all of those, God knows whatever fell in there, you know? No, really. Mix it up good. Then, got to season it. It's cornmeal don't come seasoned. Flour don't come seasoned. So we'll add some seasoning in there. Then we'll season the shrimp. Now, they're like hysterical. <laughs> they are. So now we mix them up. And I'm going to show you a little trick. What I like to do in little batches like this, see, I just take my basket like this. Then I take a little bit of shrimp, a couple at a time. Take my hand like this. And that hot sauce makes them really, really not only happy, but it kind of gives them this little, ah, this, you know, sort of moisture so that you can easily just fry the shrimp. Oh, you could do it with scallops, whatever you want to do. See? 375 degrees. We start frying the shrimp. Now, while I'm frying the shrimp, this would be a good time for you to go get, you know, one of those frozen things. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to finish this incredible shrimp salad. Stick around, we'll be right back. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody, huh? Yeah. So as you can see, what I got here now is I got a little, a few paper, uh, paper towels on this little plate. I want to fry them nice and golden brown like this, you see? Then what you want to do is you want to be sure whatever you fry, when it comes out of the fryer, that hot oil, that's when you want to season it. It's like a like a little sponge like that. <laughs> they just love that. So if you just want to use regular salt, pepper, I'm going to use a little essence. Yeah. I'm actually going to use a little more. All right, so now I got the fried shrimp, Vidalia onions, 
slice them up real thin. If you don't have Vidalia's, you can use, there's also a sweet Texas onion you can use, depending on the type of the year it is. That spring and early summer, those Vidalia's are coming out from Georgia. Really, really delicious. And then, of course, in a little brine, a little salt, a little pickling seasoning, some vinegar, made some pickled okra. These guys right here, we use a lot of okra in the south, particularly in a lot of different gumbos we use. Nothing like fresh okra. Fried okra, love it. This is pickled okra. That's it. I mean, come on. Like I said, it ain't rocket science. Now we're ready to do this thing. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some field greens or whatever kind of greens that you have. This is a little mizuna. I even got a little bit of fresh herbs in there. I think it's a good way you can add fresh herbs. If Those of you that have an herb garden at home, like mine, which is like growing like wild right now. Got to go out there and whack it down like every week because it's just like out of control. I don't know what that guy's putting in the soil, but I'm telling you. I cut, well, I won't get into it. Anyhow, <laughs> I'll save it for another show. Anyhow, put a little bit of herbs in there if you want. Then season them up, a little salt. And this one you can practice, you see? <laughs> Some pepper. What I like to do, here, we've got one fancy plate, one regular plate. All right, here's what we do. You take some of that remoulade, that dressing we made. And I don't like to, like, have the lettuces soaked. Just want to add a little bit of that just to sort of lightly cover it. You can use tongs, use your hands. Just lightly toss them. And then if you want it more, toss it more. If you want it wetter than that, add more dressing. But I don't like when the dressing sort of takes over the salad. Here's how simple you do this. I like to uh, take a little bit of the remoulade on the bottom of the plate. See? That's what I'll do with this one, too. Right on the bottom of the plate like this will make a little circle. Then take a little bit of the greens put them right in the center of the plate a little bit of those greens in the center of the plate then I like to take some of that Vidalia onion just put a few Vidalia onion slices like in the center like that see that a little Vidalia onion in the center you want more add more hey you're not gonna hurt my feelings then, we'll take some of these shrimp, add some of these shrimp around here like such. Okay. I'm making a friend. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Isn't that a good sauce? Very nice. <laughs> we'll add some of those shrimp like this. And then, hey, look, guys, if you want to add more remoulade dressing, you can add more remoulade dressing. I just like to sort of just nappe mine just a little bit on the onion, like such, okay? Some pickled okra. Perfect little salad right there, huh? Little influences of the South just everywhere. There you have it. That's how simple it is, okay, folks? My friend, my essence friend up there, this is for you. Bam! How's that, okay? All right. Now, remember, there's two of you. You make some friends. Good friend, John. We'll make some friends right there. That's how simple it is. All right. We'll get the, uh, we'll get Miss Jill and Patricia and stuff. We'll get some of this other stuff here going out here in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to show you this southern condiment. Condiment want to make sure that we're all straight you know it's a G rated show we're trying to be here so this particular condiment you can make it and then we'll talk about sterilizing the jar and keeping it because it'll keep in that environment for like a month 
I generally make it. It's so easy to make. I hang on to it for about a week, a week and a half. If you got that much left, you shouldn't be home anyhow, right? <laughs> so this is a great little condiment. And this condiment that we're going to use is when I show you in a little bit in the show, I'm going to make these incredible. I love ham hocks. It's a pork fat thing. <laughs> they make these ham hocks with these beans that'll, I mean, make you wild. This condiment is a wonderful accoutrement with that. But look, let me show you first of all. We get a little bit of oil in this sauce pot. That's what this is here. And then, I'll go over this real quick. This is one onion diced up, chopped up. This is about five or six large tomatoes. You got small tomatoes, you can figure it out. Basically about three cups, four cups. Don't have to be like everything perfect. Chilies. You see all of these influences making this. This is a red jalapeno, you got green jalapeno. Hey, I'm not biased, I'm using both, okay? <laughs> I got one of each. Then I got a little allspice and a little clove and a little nutmeg. Crazy ingredients, you go, where did that come from? Just watch. Here's what we're gonna do. You start with the onion. And we're gonna cook that for about a minute, two minutes in that oil like that. You don't want to get a lot of color, okay? Because we're just trying to get the onion, we're trying to extract the flavor out of that. Again, I, I don't see any garlic. I see an empty thing, I don't see any garlic. So we gotta, yeah, we gotta get some garlic. Sorry about that. So, you know, one, two cloves, whatever you like like that. You just add, you know, whatever, you know. You know, it's amazing. You figure there's so many people in New York City here, right? We're doing the show. But yet, at the end of every show, when I leave here and I walk on the street, nobody comes like 20 feet in front of me. They all stand back. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't figure it out. You know, it's like, hey, Emerald, how you doing? I, I, why are they waving over there like that? I don't know. All right, all right. So now we got the onion, the garlic, one or two minutes. Then after that, it's easy. Add the tomato. Both jalapeno chilies, whatever you like. Hey, maybe you like poblano, whatever you like. Put the jalapeno in there. Then we're gonna put the spices. A little bit of salt. A Little bit of pepper. Then we take some vinegar, just regular old vinegar. Just enough vinegar so that it covers the tomatoes. You bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna let it simmer very slowly. And the evaporation starts happening. When that happens, the concentration of flavors begin to happen. You wanna talk about an easy and tasty, tasty condiment. Oh, condiment, exactly. That's what I said. When we come back, another notch. Stick around. Stop it. Gibbs and Cliff, welcome back. Welcome back, Emerald Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, we are enjoying a little Southern cuisine. And uh, you know, that condiment <laughs> that we made, after you uh, let that simmer for about, oh, it's probably gonna take about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, you let it cool, and then if you're not going to do the, uh, you know, sterilizing the canning jar, that whole thing, to keep it for, you know, a long period of time, then you just want to keep it in a non-reactive little dish. You see how that looks right there? We're going to let that cool, and now we're going to, like, really let it get chilled in there, and I'm going to show you how we're going to use that. 
Now, ham hocks in the south. Oh, I know. I, I love them. I love these things. One of the things with this bean, you got to be very careful. I don't know where you all getting ham hocks from. We, where we in New Orleans, we get them smoked. Not too often will you get them fresh. You want them smoked. And when they're this big, I mean, this is a, this is a serious hawk right here. This won a race, I promise you right here, this, <laughs> this thing. Either that, you can just put one of them gold chains on that thing. You can walk around the neighborhood with it. Well, that's for me anyhow. But if your hawks get this big, immaculate, I'm going to give you a little trick that I do that is dynamite when you're using these things, particularly when you're going to make beans. Leslie, our chef, I was just asking her in between the commercial break, I said, you know, are you still hung up on this whole when you're doing beans? You know, there was a lot of back and forth about when you make white beans or red beans or black beans that you should not never season the beans in the beginning. You should always wait to the end because if you didn't do that, it would make the beans tough. I don't know who comes up with this thing. I, I, I don't know. I season my beans before and after. See, I do it both ways. And I never had tough beans. My philosophy is about the quality, maybe, of the beans. I can see all these faces over here. You know, those of you that have, you know, like red beans or split peas, been in the pantry like six or eight months, you haven't like quite got to the one pound bag yet, you know what I mean, you know who you are. Maybe then you're going to have a pro, I don't know. But hey, whatever, whatever you want to do. Let me tell you my trick. My trick when the hocks are this big, you put them in a pot first with bay leaf. You cover them about an inch over them with water. Bring it up to a boil, you let it simmer about an hour. What does it do? First of all, you started tenderizing the hock already. So you don't have to wait, because you want that hock to fall off the bone, flavor that. I don't want to lose the flavor. Now I've got a ham hock stock. You see? So then what I do after I do that for an hour, that's when I stop my beans when the hocks are big like this, because I use that liquid from the ham hocks already, instantly jump starts the flavor. Then if you need to add a little bit more H2O out of the faucet, you know, you do that. So that's what you do when the hocks are big, okay? The other way for this presentation of what we do, you get a hot skillet like this, Dutch oven, whatever you want to call it. You get the smoked hocks, and what you can start to do is in that hot skillet, you can brown them. For me... I like the idea of making the ham hock stock. I started doing it a few years ago. It works every time. The thing is, is that if you know that you're going to do this, hey, the day before, you can do the ham hocks, let them cool, and just keep them in the ice box. Then the next day when you want to start your beans, you know they're going to take about two hours for good beans anyhow, at least. So just something to think about. Now, the other thing that you can do is brown them a little bit. Get a little bit more of that flavor coming out of that. It's totally up to you. I really prefer, as I said, to do the ham hock stock. About an hour, hour and 15 minutes, then you can start your beans. How do you do that? Simple, look, got a little oil in there. Couple of small onions, chopped up. Now this is when this is when the controversy starts and they start saying, well, you're not supposed to season this thing right now. It's like, give me a break, will you? <laughs> oh, yeah, they got like the seasoning bean patrol <laughs> out on Park Avenue right now, you know? You can see them. Look, they really got little, little spy glasses. Oh, Emerald's going to season the beans right now. <laughs> Bam! Yeah! Yeah! Matter of fact, I'm really going to season them. Oh, 
Okay, three, four minutes. The onions get a little flavor. Bay leaves. These are fresh. You could have dry. Just kind of bend them a little bit like that. The oil starts coming out. Instantly starts flavoring them like that. Now, whatever else. I mean, look, you don't have to. You got to be too fancy. Garlic, yeah. All right, we'll add some garlic, all right? About what, that much? All right, we'll add a little more. <laughs> hey, if you want less garlic, add less garlic. I'm trying to live to 100 years, you know what I mean? All right, I got these white beans. They got cannelli beans, red beans, black beans, whatever you want. I'm going to use these white beans right here now. Then put the hocks in there. See, if we had the ham stock right now, we just would put it right in there, jump start the flavor already. I love that jump start the flavor thing. Got to use that again. Jump start the flavor. Love that. So now what you got to do, cover them up, bring it to a boil, and then you got to let it start simmering. You can't boil them, boil them, boil them. Bring them to a boil, let them simmer. I'm going to tell you, they're going to take about two hours. They stop popping, they get creamy. Ham hocks go, woo, you know. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, I'm, <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to show you this Acadiana breakfast specialty called couscous. And I'm going to show you how we're going to put this whole thing together with the ham hocks and beans, that condiment that we made, <laughs> and as well as this incredible couscous. Don't even think about touching that dial. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Doc Gibbs and Cliff. I got a pat cast iron skillet. Every household in the south. Regular skillet here. I'm going to show you this couscous. Then we'll go check on our beans, white beans and ham hocks. I scraped one ear of corn, some onion, and a little garlic. Now, I've got an egg and milk, and I've got a little bit of stock. Rhoda, is everything okay? <laughs> we, have, we have time to do this dish? Okay. Okay, just checking. You scared me for a minute. We all love Rhoda, don't, you know. Yeah. Just, you know. So while our corn is in a skillet like that, I got an egg, some milk, like I said, a little bit of stock. You don't have to add stock if you don't want. Sometimes people put bacon in this thing and the fat, you know, which is lard. <laughs> My kind of. Baking powder, cayenne pepper, a little salt, tiny bit of sugar. Now what we'll do is we'll whisk in the flour and then we'll slowly start whisking in the cornmeal. Kind of a lot like cornbread, a little denser. Depending if they don't serve this in the morning and if they serve this, if they serve this in the morning, what they'll do is they'll pour cane syrup on this, like steams, right out of that, hot. But if it's in the... Uh, afternoon and the evening, like what we're going to do a savory thing, sometimes they'll put like jalapenos or they'll put bell peppers or 
What I like to do is this. I get a little oil in my cast iron skillet like this. Then our fresh corn and onion, which is supposed to be cool. No, that was cool. You know, it was just, you had to been there. It was, what we're going to do now, you see, that's going to knock it down a little bit. And then what I do is you take the batter like this inside of this cast iron skillet with the oil. You have your oven on about. 375 degrees, okay? Spread that around there, that couscous like that. It's going to start getting the color. We're going to go in the oven. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this and an incredible buttermilk pie. Stick around. We'll be right back. back everybody we got a little couscous going in over here about 25 minutes you see right in the uh, cast iron skillet that's what you want to do like that do cornbread like that too you let it cool on a little rack when it's done the beans are done the condiments done boy you're ready for some good eating watch what we're gonna do that's the couscous after it gets cool generally what they'll do is they'll take a wedge of this depending on how hungry you are They'll take a wedge of this, like such. Then, after those beans have cooked with them ham hock like this, see all that meat falls off the bones? Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> you take that ham hock with that beans like that, and you ladle a little bit right over that, you see? Just like that. And that's where the condiment comes in. <laughs> you take a little bit of that spicy condiment, a little bit of that right on top like that. Boy, it doesn't get any more southern than that. That's, uh, that's how you have it right there, okay? All right, guys. You guys are coming up. It wouldn't be any more, it wouldn't be any more southern without finishing it with an incredible buttermilk pie. You start by making a great pie crust, and uh, you blind, what they call blind bake, the pie crust. That means so that, uh, there you go. That means like this, okay? About 15 minutes, it gets a little color like that. Then it's simple. Check this out. We take sugar, baking powder, the zest of one lemon, some, about four eggs, and then some buttermilk. Sugar, eggs, baking powder, four eggs, buttermilk. And the uh, flavor of the buttermilk is just incredible. You whisk it really good. Then you add a little melted butter in there. Yeah, I was, come on, it's, you know. Just like a quarter of a stick or something, you know. <laughs> it's going to feed like eight people, you know. All right. You got your filling like this. Pour your filling into your pie crust, okay? You bake that 25 minutes. 25 minutes, folks. This is what it looks like when it's done. Nice and golden brown. You let it sit like this. Cut yourself a little wedge. See the inside of that? It's like a custard. What I like to do to just finish it up is a little bit of whipped cream. Some of that fresh mint. Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight for Southern Specialties. See you tomorrow.